Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Monday, Dece uh, sorry, Tuesday, December 8th. Let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 24th through 25th chapter. On that day, the earth will burst asunder, the earth will be shaken apart, the earth will be convulsed, the earth will reel like a drunkard, and it will sway like a hut. Its rebellion will weigh it down until it fa falls, never to rise again. On that day, the Lord will punish the hosts of the heavens and the heavens, and the kings of the earth on earth. They will be gathered together like prisoners into a pit. They will be shut up in a dungeon, and after many days they will be punished. Then the moon will blush, and the sun grow pale. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, glorious in the sight of his elders. O Lord, you are my God. I will extol and you and praise your name. For you have fulfilled your wonderful plans of old, faithful and true. <clears throat> For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The castle of the insolent is a city no more, nor ever to be built, to rebuilt. Therefore, a strong people will honor you. Fierce nations will fear you. For you are a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in distress. Shelter from the rain, shade from the heat, as with the cold rain, as with the desert heat. Even so, you quell the uproar of the wanton. Many nations will come and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the home of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. And a reading from a letter by St. Ambrose. You have entered upon the office of bishop, sitting at the helm of the church. You pilot the ship against the waves. Take firm hold of the rudder of faith, so that the severe storms of this world cannot disturb you. The sea is mighty and vast, but do not be afraid, for as scripture says, he has founded upon the seas and established it upon the waters. The church of the Lord is built upon the rock of the apostles, among so many dangers in the world. It therefore remains unmoved. The church's foundation is unshakable and firm against the assaults of the raging sea. Waves lash at the church, but do not shatter it. Although the elements of this world constantly beat upon the church with crashing sounds, the church possesses the safest harbor of salvation from all, for all in distress. Although the church is tossed about on the sea, it rides easily on the rivers, especially those rivers that scripture speaks of. The rivers have lifted up their voice, these are the rivers flowing from the heart of the man who is given drink by Christ and who receives from the Spirit of God. When these rivers overflow with the grace of the Spirit, they lift up their voice. There is also a stream which flows down on God's saints like a torrent. There is also a rushing river, giving joy to the heart that is at peace and makes for peace. Whoever has received from the fullness of this river, like John the Evangelist, like Peter and Paul, lift up his voice just as the apostles lifted up their voices and preached the gospel throughout the world. So those who drink these waters begin to preach the good news of the Lord Jesus. Drink, then, from Christ, so that your voice may also be heard. Store up your mind the water that is in Christ, the water that praises the Lord. Store up water from many sources, the water that rains down from the clouds of prophecy. Whoever gathers water from the mountain and leads it to himself 
or draws it from the springs, is himself a source of dew, dew like the clouds. Fill your soul, then, with this water, so that your land may not be dry, but watered by your own springs. He who reads much and understands much receives his full, his fill. He who is full refreshes others. So scripture says, if the clouds are full, they will pour rain upon the earth. Therefore, let your words be rivers, clean and limpid, so that in your exhortations you may charm the ears of your people, and by the grace of your words win them over to follow your leadership. Let your sermons be full of understanding. Solomon says, the weapons of the, understa the understanding are the lips of the wise. And in another place he says, let your lips be bound with wisdom. That is, let the meaning of your words shine forth. Let understanding blaze out. See that your addresses and expositions do not need to invoke the authority of others, but let your words be their own defense. Let no word escape your lips in vain or be uttered without death of meaning. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way of your only begun Son, so that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you as pure minds, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wish you all a blessed day and look forward to seeing you in the evening for evening prayer.